Now, it's not often on a Sunday we have an audience, but today we need one, and we've got an audience of young people and dogs. And over here, we've got our resident pianist, and it's Billy. Hello, Bill. Because today, in the studio, get this one. We're going to see a mind-reading dog. A mind-reading what? Yes, a mind-reading dog. I should have been in pantomime. And over here is Collie Wobble, and Collie Wobble is a mind-reading dog. Good morning, Collie Wobble. And the owner, Karen London. Karen, nice to meet you. Hello. Whose mind is Collie Wobble going to read? Yours. OK, that's fine. What I'd like you to do is take this piece of paper and a pen Shh. and just write a number on the paper for me, Any please. number? Collie Wobble, stop peeping. He was peeping at me. Right. Oh, right. Hold on. What? There we go. I've got a number. And now I want you to write another number underneath that, next one in sequence. So if you put a six, put a seven underneath okay, that. OK, sure. And now would you please add those numbers yep. together? Uh, I hope my maths holds out for this one. And now here I have a pack of cards. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is ask you to choose a card from this pack. I'll do that. So would you please choose a card? Any card? That there one will do. All right. Yeah. Now would you add the number of the card you've just selected to your sum? Well, I've pinned it up there to make it easier and I'll add it to that sum. You've added them together. I wish you had a calculator. There we go. And now would you now halve the number you've got? Oh, uh, that's an easy one. Right. Take away the first number you thought of. Uh, I will take the first number away. And that leaves me with that total there. And now what I want you to do is think of the number you've now got. Mm -hmm. And Wobby will read your mind. It can't be done. Surely so, not. What is that number? <laughs> Wobby says it's a five. And it is a five. Well done. Now, Wobby hasn't seen that card, has he? No. So now he's going to have a guess at what colour the card is. OK. So if it's a black one, he will bark three times. And if he thinks it's a red one, he will bark five times. OK. So think of the colour. Right, I'm thinking of the colour. What's the colour? <laughs> now, Wobby says it's a red card. And it was a red card again. And Wait now, a there's a number on that card. Yep. And now what I want you to do is think of that number. I'm What's thinking the number? hard. <laughs> Bobby says it's a red card and it's a nine. It is a red nine. Well now, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. Would you place it back in the pack, please, anywhere more. you like? I'll yes. put it back in there. How about that? And what I shall do now is give the pack a little shuffle, like that. And now I'm going to ask Wobby to choose a card from the pack, and I hope he's going to choose the card you've just selected. Oh. So let's see if he can do that for us. Hold on, he's got a card. He's got a card in his and hand. He's going to give it to me back. And it's the uh, Queen of Clubs. Oh. <laughs> it was close, but not bad at all. Wobby, I know you only did it wrong, so you wouldn't show the other dogs up. Anyway, I'll leave that down there. I'm still <laughs> shaken by that. That was incredible. Please don't try that one at home. And now for something just as incredible are these cars. Here we have a Lamborghini Contash. In the corner, I have a Citroen 2CV. And over here, we have what looks like, to me, a Sierra. David Bibbian, nice to meet you. Hi, Julian. David, you brought these performance cars down here. What's your job? I'm the Rotas editor of Autocar and Motor Magazine, which is the country's leading weekly motor magazine. So you make comments on performance cars? Performance cars, uh, medium price cars, any sort of car, really. And I know now that you've actually brought this book out which says Supercars, the myth and the magic. What does the book contain? Well, I hope it's the, the true story of the supercar, not all the, uh, the glamorous stuff that people usually write about, but every sort of supercar. The Lamborghini over there and this one here. Well, I looked at this last night. I think it's a great glossy edition. I fell in love with all the cars in there, but you've tested them all. What is your favourite car? What would you own? Very difficult question, one we're asked quite a lot. I think my very favourite car is probably uh, a Porsche 944 Turbo. But you don't actually own a car? I don't own a car, no. Oh. Uh, we, we get to test about 150 cars a year, so there's plenty to go around each night. OK, great. This is the Lamborghini Contash, an incredible piece of mechanical sculpture, but just how practical is it? It does 173 miles to the gallon, but when can miles per hour, sorry, but when can you ever do that in this country? It also uses up a massive amount of fuel, which is bad news for the conservationists and expensive news for the owners. Mind you, at 95 grand a shot, the owners obviously don't have too much to worry about when thinking of money. The Lamborghini is more than just a means of getting from A to B for its owners. It's a status symbol. It symbolises power, wealth, plus that secret ingredient called flash. Wealth, can we get out for a moment? Is the Lamborghini Contest just a bit flash? 
Well, as you can see, it's, it's very flash. It's completely outrageous, out of this world. Uh, even in the era of cars like the Porsche 959, which is a lot more expensive and faster than the, the Lamborghini, this one outshines them all just for sheer style. Yeah, well, I'd love the car itself. It looks very stylish, and I believe the performance matches its appearance. Very nearly. Uh, Lamborghini tell a little light, white lie with this one. They say it'll do 190. In fact, the, the truth is nearer 170, 175. Quick enough for most people, then. I'm sure Lamborghini love you for that one. Now, this car looks like a Sierra to me. It does indeed. I mean, very standard, very sober-looking car, but uh, the real secret is, is under the bonnet. This is the Cosworth edition of the car. It's turbocharged, 2.1 litres, 204 brake horsepower and a top speed of around about 145 miles an hour. Doesn't look it, but uh, it, it does the business, really. So it's as flash under the bonnet as a Lamborghini is? Well, almost. It has less cylinders. The Lamborghini has 12 cylinders, and they're behind the driver. This has four cylinders. There is a link. Uh, both have four valves per cylinder, which uh, increases the power the engine can produce. And it's a lot cheaper? A lot cheaper. This is about £20,000. The Lamborghini is over £90,000. So what sort of people buy these sorts of cars? Well, really, they're, they're the people who, who want the driving satisfaction and performance of a supercar, but aren't particularly uh, impressed by having a lot of people look at them. Everybody looks at the Lamborghini, you hardly get a second look in this. You can travel faster for a lot, a lot more of the time. And very much easier to put a family in the back, suitcases in the boot. Practical car, just as the, the standard Sierra. Four doors, a decent sized boot. A practical car as well as a fast one. So do you think we're selling a lot more of these on the market this year than those? Yes, a, a great deal more. Right, well, I've not actually driven a Sierra or a Lamborghini Contash. To be quite honest with you, David, the car I would drive would be the Contash because I'm a bit flashy and I'm sure Caroline will tell you so. Thanks very much. OK. Right at the other end of the spectrum, in every way imaginable, is the French Citroën 2CV. It was built for mass consumption after the war, just like the Morris Minor in Britain and the Volkswagen in Germany. Above all, it's a practical car. In fact, you can strip the whole thing down and rebuild it using just two spanners. It's also good value for money. You can buy 22 of these for one of the Lamborghinis. Of course, it's not as glamorous as the supercars, but it's got its own charm. And finally, let's face it, when it comes down to it, cars are less about money than about taste. And I think, frankly, I'd prefer this one to the Lamborghini. Well, I can sit by this one and dream, but that was part one. Still to come in part two, Caroline will tell you how you can help the new conservation movement called ARC. We'll have more cartoons with those cheeky chipmunks